All right, good morning, geometry class. I am currently here on Monday working on this video for y'all. Um, I was able to get this pen to work again, so I will be able to do vocabulary with you guys. Given that I'm not there or here, I guess, right now, um, we're going to go ahead and skip our warm up and we're going to go straight into our um, vocabulary. Downside about this is that we don't get to chit chat. Upside about this is that we get through the math a lot faster. Okay. So let's start off with the first vocabulary word, which is Pythagorean theorem. We have already seen this like a bajillion times um, up until this point. Um, and we're going to keep on using it, especially during this unit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give like the formal definition for this. Theorem, it is um, when you are given a right triangle with legs, with, with my bad, with leg lengths, with leg length lengths of A and B and a hypotenuse length of C. If you have not yet gotten a piece of paper to work on vocabulary, you should go ahead and take out that piece of paper right now because that's what we're going to be doing primarily for the first couple of minutes. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to create a right triangle. That way we get a visual of what's going on. But again, if you do not have a piece of paper out already, take one out so that you can follow along. All right, so I am labeling the um, the sides of this right triangle. And I want to point out um, the formula for the Pythagorean theorem. Everyone should know this at this point, or at least you guys should be familiar with it. It should be A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, I do want to note something about the, um, the Pythagorean theorem idea. Um, you must always have the that the hypotenuse, hypotenuse, um, it always is across from the right angle. It's always across from right angle, right angle. So if I were to look at this picture right here, that right angle, I would put a little arrow. This is considered my hypotenuse. Voila, right side. Let's go ahead and now continue on to the next vocab term, which is Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem converse. Now we've already talked about the the word converse before. It's like the opposite. Um, I will say that the, this converse isn't as self-explanatory as I would have hoped for, um, but you can still get some valuable information from it. So, um, don't tune out. <laughs> so here it says that if a triangle can be made with lengths A, B, and C, where C is the largest side, meaning it's the hypotenuse, um, then we're going to have a couple of things, specifically three possible scenarios. I'm going to put then, and then let's go ahead and talk about that first scenario, okay? I'm going to give you guys just a quick minute to catch up. Okay, so here's the first scenario. If A squared plus B squared, that's the two shorter legs, right? Not the hypotenuse, the two legs. If they are greater than the hypotenuse squared, um, then we're going to have that the triangle is acute. It's a cute little one, right? Because it's acute. <laughs> okay, next one. Oh, by the way, uh, let me actually show you an example of this. So before I move on to the next one. So say I have a beautiful triangle that looks like this, okay? And then I have that these are 
my A and B legs. So these are my legs. And I have that this happens to be my C, which in this case, my C isn't the longer side, but you know, that's what this theorem is saying is it's giving information about the legs itself. So um, if this is the case, and if I were to do the first leg squared plus the second leg squared, and then off to the side, if I were to kind of do like a the C, right, which is one, so if I were to square it, I would end up getting four plus four, which is eight, and I'd get one over here. Well, that's clearly going to be bigger than my hypotenuse. And in this case, this would prove that it is an acute triangle, which you can see visually, right? But yeah, so we'd have an acute triangle. Let's look at the second possibility. If a squared plus b squared, okay, the two leg lengths, they're squared and added together. If they are less than the c squared, then we're going to have that the triangle is obtuse, right? So now we're flipping the inequality. Instead of it facing one way, now it's facing the other. And so instead of it being a small, acute triangle, it's going to be an obtuse, a big, large, obtuse triangle. An example of this would be, say I have a triangle that looks something like this. And this is a side length of one. That's a side length of one. And then that hypotenuse is a three. If I were to do it algebraically to kind of prove this scenario, um, I would have one squared plus one squared. And then I kind of compare it to my, my C squared, which happens to be three to the second power. I'm going to get one plus one, which is two. And I'm going to have nine right here. Well, nine is bigger than two. And visually, you can also see that that's taking place as well. So we would be dealing with an obtuse triangle. Okay, third scenario and last one for our vocabulary, and then we're going to go straight into our study guide, which you guys should have at this point, but if not, that should be passed out very shortly for y'all, okay? So, um, third situation is if a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, then our triangle is going to be a right triangle. That should be a familiar um, equation, right? We've already seen that before, so better, better, but so that it should be a right triangle. And But we'll prove it right now. So say I have a triangle that looks something like this. I have four for one leg length, three for another, and then five for my hypotenuse. If I were to kind of compare this right here, I would have four squared plus three squared and five squared on the other side. When I go through the math, this should be 16 plus nine, and then 25, what's 16 plus nine? I hope everyone is able to get that it's 25, um, which ha they happen to be the same, right? So if they're the same, then by the Pythagorean theorem, we know that this has to be a right triangle. So I would put like a little right angle right there, okay? So this is uh, the last definition that we would need to be going over um, before we get started on our study guide. Let's now move on to that study guide right here. Let's say, go to expand it. If it actually lets me. There we go. Yay. All right. Eh? So let's start off with the first page. Um, it should look something like this, the Pythagorean theorem and its converse. Um, we are told to find our x values um, given these particular triangles. In this case, all of these triangles are right triangles, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to our advantage. I'm only going to be going over a couple with y'all. We'll start off with number two, and then we'll go from there, okay? So number two, what information am I given? I am told one of my legs and I'm told my hypotenuse. The most important thing about the Pythagorean theorem is placing the numbers or the information in the correct spot. So remember for the Pythagorean theorem, 
that A and B value, those are my legs and you can put them wherever you want. That's fine. But the hypotenuse always has to be right there by itself, that C squared. Otherwise, that's going to mess up your whole answer. So if I were to apply it to this problem number two, I would end up getting nine squared plus whatever my other length is, which happens to be X. So I'll do X squared is equal to 15 squared. Now, what is nine squared? Should be 81 plus X squared. And what is 15 squared? Should be 225. So if I subtract 81 from both sides, whew, can't do mental math, but I have it right here for me. So bam, should be 144. If I take the square root of 144, because remember, I, I have to get that x by itself. I don't want x squared. I want x. If I do just that, I would get the square root of 144, which is 12. So that is what my uh, missing side length was. Okay. Let's move on to 5. So for numero 5, we are going to, um, again, identify the information that's given to us, try to figure out what we're trying to find. So... I'm told in this case, uh, two side lengths, and I'm trying to find my hypotenuse. So when I set this up, it should be 16 squared plus 33 squared, because those are my legs, okay? And I'm going to set it equal to x squared. See if you can figure this out on your own. Once um, you guys have taken some time to do that, press play again. Okay. So at this point, I'm hoping that y'all got 1,345, and that should be equal to x squared. Um, I thought I might trick a little bit of you guys. Maybe you guys thought, hey, something is wrong because we're getting some decimal. Um, but the, the, the reality is it's possibility to get fractions and decimals when we're dealing with the Pythagorean theorem, so don't be afraid. Um, if you put this into the calculator correctly, and if I did as well, um, it should be about 36.67, okay? All right, say. We're going to do two more on this side, and then we're going to move it over to the second page. Second page should go by fairly quickly. Let's look at number six. So again, what information am I told? In this case, I'm told a leg and... Ooh, a hypotenuse. So I need to set it up accordingly. I'm going to put x squared, because that's a leg length, plus 11 squared, that's another leg length, is equal to 28 squared. When I go through the process, this should give me um, x squared plus, and if I'm not mistaken, it should be 121. Let me double check. My, yeah, my my brain is faltering me. Um, so I, I needed to double check. The other one that we'll need to double check as well is um that 28 squared. So I'm gonna plug it in, see what we get. So this is 784. If I subtract 121 from both sides, I wonder what that gives me. <laughs> should be x squared is equal to 663. And then if I take the square root of this, oof, let's see, the square root of 663, that gives me approximately 25.75-ish, okay? Verify on your end, might've made a mistake, um, but, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's good, okay? All right, let's go ahead and now um, look at number eight. It's actually the same idea. If they're trying to trip you up with the whole idea of the Pythagorean triple. It's the same thing as the Pythagorean theorem. So just keep on continuing to use this, this formula. Um, so setup would be, again, making sure I identify what my legs are, what my hypotenuse is. Remember, the one across is always the hypotenuse. So I'm searching for the hypotenuse here. Oops, there you go. Okay, 
So let me do this math on my calculator. Um, you should actually be able to put this whole thing into your calculator, which is what I'm doing on my computer as well, um, just to save me some time. And I'm hoping that you guys got the same thing that I got, which is 2,601 is equal to that x squared. Then from there, I would need to take the square root of that. So the square root of two, 2,601. Ooh, and that actually doesn't give me a, a decimal. It actually gives me 51. Did y'all get the same thing? I hope you guys did. Okay, let's go ahead and turn to the next page. Right, eh? Um, so we are told down here that we need to determine each uh, whether, whether each set of measures can be the measures of the sides of a triangle. We discussed this um, last semester where in order for a triangle to be made, something needs to be true about the sides of the triangles. So to give you guys a, a brief review, um, we would need to have that the two shortest lengths, so the two shorter lengths of that triangle, it needs to be bigger than the longest, the longest uh, side length. Because if it isn't, oops, I forgot, I didn't, side length. Because if those two shorter lengths aren't um, greater than the longest side length, it, it won't be able to connect, all right? And we, um, we, we talked about that last semester, and so I'm hoping that this rings a bell. Um, once we've done that, we're actually going to use the Pythagorean theorem converse. So that is, that is this information right here that we wrote down earlier. We're going to use those three possible scenarios to help us determine if we're dealing with an acute triangle, an obtuse triangle, or a right triangle. Okay. I'm only going to work on four with y'all. Um, so we'll start off with number two, number two, okay? So let's first check to see if this even is going to create a triangle. So let's look at the shorter lengths. The shorter lengths are 20 and 30. If I were to add those together, what do I get? I get 50. Is 50 greater than 40? Yes. So we can create a triangle from this. Next step would be again to check to see if it's a an acute triangle, a right triangle, or an obtuse triangle. Um, we would do that by doing the two shorter lengths, squaring them and adding them together. That is greater than 40, uh, 40 squared, okay? Now, I already did the math for these ones specifically, so I'm gonna zoom through them. Um, if you guys wanted to double check, oh, I don't know why I put the inequality sign. We actually need to verify that first. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be facing that way. So this is to verify. Sorry. Um, then this is 1,600. So it actually isn't facing one way. Um, when we use the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to find that the hypotenuse is actually greater when it's squared. So based off of our vocab, if I have that my hypotenuse squared is greater than my two legs squared and added together, then I'm dealing with an obtuse triangle, okay? So let's go over here and we're gonna write that this is obtuse, okay? Let's now look at five together. I mean, yeah, five together. <laughs> so I need to identify which Lengths are smaller, it's these two. If I add them together, will it be greater than the longest side length? The answer, I hope that you guys got it, is no. So these two gives me 18. It's exactly the same length as my longest, my longest side of my triangle. So it's not gonna work out. It's not gonna give me a triangle. So we would write not a triangle. Okay, let's look at number four together. 
let's identify the two shorter side lengths. Add them together. That should give me 14. Is 14 greater than 9? Yes, it is. So because of that, I know that it can be made. It is a triangle. Now I can identify what type of triangle it is by um, using the Pythagorean theorem converse idea. So I would do the two shorter lengths squared and added together. I don't know why I put six again. And I'm going to compare it to the longest side squared. When I do six squared plus eight squared, what does that give me? Take some time, see if you can plug into your calculator all at once. Okay, I hope that you guys got 100 as well. Um, and nine squared should be 81. So in this case, I have that my two shorter lengths, when I use this idea, it's going to be greater than my longest side squared. So what does that tell me? If I go over here, well, that means I'm dealing with an acute triangle. So let's go ahead and put acute. Okay, last one that we're covering together and then you guys can go ahead and uh, get started on the homework that we're gonna pass out or that um, the sub is going to pass out. Um, this one is number eight. We're dealing with square roots. <laughs> um, but the same idea applies. We need to check here. These two lengths, they happen to be the smaller ones. If I add them together, is it going to be greater than this square root of 12? So if you plug this into your calculator, you should end up getting some type of decimal. It's about 4.80 something, 83 if you round it really. Um, and that is greater than the square root of 12. The square root of 12 is 3.46. So we can, in fact, create this triangle. Um, so from this point, we should be able to use the Pythagorean theorem converse to determine, okay, well, what type of triangle are we dealing with? So um, we'll do two squared plus eight, and then I'm gonna put parentheses around it just because I want to, um, that way I don't confuse it. And I'm squaring that, and I wanna compare it to that square root of 12 squared. What do we know about square roots and squares? I'm hoping that you guys remember it actually cancels each other out. They cancel each other out. So if I have this square root and I have that square, they're actually going to get rid of each other and I'm just going to be left with eight. The same thing applies on this side. And I have that square root, and I have that square. They both cancel each other out, so we'll be left with 12. So from this point, you guys should be able to see that 12 actually equals 12. So what scenario are we dealing with? Are we dealing with a right triangle, an obtuse triangle, an acute triangle? If I look back at our, our notes, when our a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, we're going to have a right triangle. So this last one right here would have been a right triangle. All right, so this should help get you all through the first um, lesson of this unit. I hope that it was helpful. Please know that this video should be available on Google Classroom if you need to look at it at a later time. Um, maybe stop or pause at different times to get a better idea of what's going on, all right? I hope that you guys have, have a wonderful day and I will see you guys soon. Bye.